But, 45 minutes. But if you ever do want to do it, oh. contact us first so you know. We sometimes have to change the dates and time. I mean the times. Oh really? Okay. And if it rains, we don't. Because they don't even okay. hardly set up the market. Yeah. Well, usually my husband takes the car to go to the market. All right, so we're going, moving on in the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And I'm already up ahead with, with the outline. We're going to get into so much, so much Christianity growth of what is to come, what is. And we've seen Jesus Christ as God. We've seen Jesus Christ as the Word. We've seen Jesus Christ as Creator. We've seen Jesus Christ as the light. We've seen Jesus Christ as life. Uh, John 1, 4. In him was life. And this is where we left off last week. And the life was the light of men. Now you need light to live. Amen. If you were to take your favorite flower, your favorite plant, a tomato plant, and put it in a closet with a light off and come back a week later, that's dead. There's no light. There's no light. And yet, opposite in hell is you're in complete darkness, and yet you still got your soul going. But Christ is the light. And let's look at that light of Christ, who He is. Ephesians 5.13. And notice what we're doing. We are opening the Bible with the Bible. We're not going with any book that's written by man but God's word Amen. and like I've told you before if anything I think is personal I will tell you it's personal and when I say it's me saying it you don't have to believe it you don't have to take it but when we look at the scriptures and we look at the verses with the verses you need to take it you need to believe it because the fact is once we tell God in his word I don't believe it no you're on dangerous grounds for God saying okay I'm done with it that moment when we don't believe anymore, when we reject what God has to say, that's the point where God will leave us. Now, it's okay to say, okay, there's, there's birds here. I don't know what it means. And put a question mark. Take your pencil. What I do is I put a question mark. And there's some question marks that still have not been answered. There's some question marks, well, okay, sounds good, but keep. But Ephesians 5.13, we read, but all things that were, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doeth maketh that. Uh, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Now, what is that? What's that say? People, as we were talking about the farmers market, when we go down there and preach the gospel and tell them what the Bible says, they don't like it. And I have a message I call cockroaches. Because when you go in, in, the, in your kitchen in the middle of the night and you flip that light on, the cockroaches run. And this is just like it because people do not like light because they love darkness. They love to do not what God wants them to do. That's true. And so when you're dealing with a lost man and you got the Bible, what you're doing is you're shining a light in his life. You're showing, hey, you're not as good as you think you are. And you're definitely not good in the eyes of God. And that hurts. As someone would take a flashlight and flash it into your eyeballs. And this revealing light is when you're dealing with a lost man, if you're lost, you're going to hell. When you're dealing with a Christian, or you're dealing with yourself reading and studying your Bible, and say, oh, i got imperfections. I've got sin. And one of the things that we need, which I do, I practice what I say when I do this, is when we're off alone and no one else is by, or 2 o'clock in the morning you can't sleep, is to say, God, what in my life do you not approve of? What is separating your fellowship with me because of what sins I'm doing? And many people will not do that because God will turn that light on. And for me, particular sin is right away. It comes, okay, Lord, I know. And that's, what, that's the light in our life to say, hey, we're sinners. Even saved, born again, I'm still a sinner saved by grace. And we need God's light to show us. And that light is going out. Now John chapter 8 verse 12. 
John chapter 8 verse 12. We always get the win. <laughs> oh, may the Lord bring others and we can go and rent somewhere. But right now, God's pleased. Where we are. I'm pleased. Yeah, me too. John chapter 8 verse 12. Now you read this verse, now we're looking at light, but you read this verse when you, you know someone who's saved and they're not doing right. Like I, I told a woman a couple weeks ago, uh, blah, blah, blah. you don't read your Bible. You just thought it was a big sign saying, ignorance. John 8, 12, thus oh. spake Jesus. All right, so this is the words of Jesus, again, unto them saying. So this is Jesus. I am the light of the world. Well, the world has artificial lights. Amen. You realize when the sun goes down, and let's say if it's a cloudy day, as it's going to be the next few weeks in Florida, right. if you can't see the moon, you can't see the stars, everything that man has is artificial. Light bulbs and candles are artificial light. And that picture is religion. That's something man has done. Electricity, flip a bick, do a match. The light have a battery that's not God God is well how do you change the, how do you change the batteries in the moon there is none it's God that lights that moon through the sun so Jesus said I'm the light of the world he that follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life and that's going back to what we read in John chapter 1 now again I said we're, we are all sinners we're going to sin. But though I'm a sinner, if I study, read the Bible, and try to do what God's prescribed for me in the Bible, I'm not walking in darkness. I'm a sinner. I, I, I confess my sins, and God's able to forgive me for my sins. But I'm trying the best of what the Bible says, and I'm not in the darkness. As, as I said, as, listen, last night, as the church age is going darker and darker and darker. You get an eclipse, I forget which, I think it's a lunar eclipse, when you can't see the moon. The moon is the typified of the church. And the day that they say they landed on the moon, Armstrong and all them, is a typology of the fact is when the world came into the church, and that is in the church of, I believe it's Smyrna or Ephesus in Revelation, when it's called much marriage. When our church, the Church of Jesus Christ, married into the world and took in the Catholic religion, took in the Babylonian religion. And you go into the church, they got a Christmas tree. You go into the church, they got trunk or tree. Or you go into the church and they got a... a uh, uh, That's bringing the world in. Uh, uh, what is that called? Uh, the tree. Um, groves. Groves. Uh, they got worldly things and they're doing worldly pleasures. And they got bounce houses and all that. That's the church going dark. But we as Christians, there's light. Light of God is to show. Light will show. Now, if I go to my wife and my wife comes to me and says, you know, there's something on my skin I want you to look at. The first thing we're not going to do is turn off the light. <laughs> We're going to get a better light. Like when Rachel took a picture of her yesterday in her painting. I said, Rachel, turn the light on so I can get a bit of picture. That's just, you want to eliminate. You want to show. You want. And that's what Jesus Christ can do in our lives. Again, I, I say to you, we must go to God and say, God, what is preventing the fellowship between me and you? Because not what you've done, but what I'm doing. And again, I said, when, the Lord, when I do that with the Lord, the very first thing that comes up is patience. Your lack of patience. Now, what can I do with that? I can say, Lord God, will help me. Or I can say, Lord God, uh, it's okay. It's taken care of. It's not that problem. And then I turn off the light. When I tell God, oh, I got under control, it ain't that bad. We turn off, then we're going to start walking in darkness. When you read your Bible, say, well, that ain't so. We're dealing with a guy right now, and he's having a problem with the modern Bible and the King James Bible. Well, there's only one word, and the word is Jesus Christ. The word 
is the light we just read here. Jesus says, I'm the light. We read the word is Jesus. And we're going to turn to something else. We're going to turn to a worldly Bible. You're going in darkness and darkness and darkness. And when I flash that light on him with the true word, as I've done with him, open and compared the light with the darkness of his Bible and my Bible, i got to get out of here. I'm in trouble. And again, it's, it's the message I got in John chapter 3, the cockroach. You turn that light on, poof, I'm out of here. Now, when you got, now how do you know you got something that you can go further? When you're dealing with a lost man. If he's still sitting there and still looking at that word and he's not questioning, he's not fighting. You've got somewhere to go. But if they're, uh, Tracy's seeing, Rachel's seeing, I deal with people and they're fighting, they want to get out of here. You're not going anywhere. Well, it's easier to read, or I do it my way. This is not what my church said. You're in darkness. Ah, the light. The light. And one of the things in World War II with, with the U-boats of the, of the Germans was the aircraft of the Allies would have a spotlight. And when they seen that the U-boat was surfaced, they would flash this bright light as a light of right at that combing counter of that sh of the submarine and it would blind them and they can't do nothing and that's what the word of god does to you it will blind you first but as slowly as you go through the scriptures you know your eyes start getting clearer and clearer and one day god's going to give us a new body because oh i've seen god really if you've seen god your eyeballs would blow out when moses seen god his face lit up his confidence and God told Moses, no man can see God, you're going to die. So those stories that people tell you are foolish. And if they say, oh, I've been to hell, what'd you say? Oh, I saw. You're a liar, because hell is dark. Yeah. Shut up, go away. First thing you ask them, somebody comes to you, oh, I've seen hell, what'd you say? As soon as they say, what I saw, there's no light in hell. You can't see it. You know what the light in, in heaven is? When Paul's going down that road to Damascus, the light is brighter than the sun of the noonday, it and it blinded, blinded him. Oh, wow. That's light. And when you're dealing with a lost man, when you're dealing with your husband, you know why he turns away? Because it hurts. Ouch. And you got to understand, it takes time. It takes, you got to, you know, rub your eyes. It takes a little time and work. It takes a little time and work. So you got to show patience, because that light hurts. Imagine if you're lying in bed, you're, you've got the mouth silent sleep and your daughter calls you. No. Somebody comes with flashes of light in your eyes. Like, uh. You don't like it. And that's the same thing with dealing with somebody with the light. Give them time. It hurt. And you know what? If it hurt, it did something. Whether good or bad, that's between them and God. Right. So, John chapter 12, 35. And Satan hates the light. John chapter 12, verse 35. John 12, 35. Talking about that light. Your plants need light. I mean, we could be the sunshine state, but if it's going to rain for a month, your plants ain't going to do too well. If it's cloudy and dark, they're not going to do too well. John 12, 35, and Jesus said unto them, okay, so this is Jesus again speaking, and when Jesus speaks, we need to, not that broker, when Jesus speaks, we need to listen. And a lost man won't listen. Christians won't even listen. Yet, a little while, is the light with you. That's Jesus. He's going to the cross. He's on his way to the cross. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Now again, that lost man you're dealing with, he doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't want to believe in hell. He, He's going the way of a, of, a, of a church or a doctrine or a textbook or whatever. He does not know. And so the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them where they're going. Give them that light. There's a hymn, send out the gospel light. But for us, 
He's speaking to Christians. And he's telling them, if you walk in the light of the Word, there will be no darkness. As long as you do pray and read the Bible and study the Bible and confess your sins, you're not going to be in darkness. And yet, when, like I said, we, we talked about the public ministry, we have people come over. That's not what Jesus would do. You're blinded. You don't know because you have not studied because it's throughout the whole Bible. The Bible says that Noah, somewhere around that ark, preached to the people about salvation. The Bible speaks about Enoch preached. Jesus preached to multitudes. You had to have a voice elevated. And God has given me such a voice for that elevation of the public ministry to irritate you. You talk to my mom with my loud voice and my grandma, and they would tell you I irritated a fire out of and in 1987, I received Christ as my Savior. Rachel was uh, six years old. I, I don't know what year that was. And I, I stood on the street corner, and I lifted up my mouth and opened up to John 3.16 and spoke out, and it went out. That's light. And again, if they're unsaved, they're not going to appreciate that. Now, the Bible says... I have planted on Paul's water. Now let's say Tracy's dealing with someone and she's opened the Bible, she's giving gospel tracts to somebody. And then somebody comes along and they open up the Bible with them and they're not going to be as, oh, they've already had training of that light. They've already, oh I, yeah, someone's told me about that, or I've read that in a track, or I heard that on the radio somewhere. But there is the possibility of walking in darkness. Judas will go into darkness. Judas had the healing ministry. J Judas collected the money for Jesus. Judas would pay all the things that Jesus needed. Judas was the one that would go and preach also in the towns. He sent Judas out just as much as he sent Peter, James, and John. And then Judas went in the way of darkness. And we need to be careful. We cannot be so holier than thou as Christians and say, I'm okay, I'm wonderful, and boom. And God said, okay, just flip off that switch, turn off the light, and then we'll allow, and that's what churches have done. And that's why there are churches out there that were once great in the word of God and now are carnal because of pride, because they don't want that light no more. And the world don't want that light. And we want masses and masses of numbers of people in our church. We want to have a mega church. we got to turn off the gospel light. And we got to turn on the darkness. we got to have the Christmas lights. we got to have the lights of a carnival. The Ferris wheels got to be lit and all up. We've got to put the lights on our house and show it's Halloween. Isn't it amazing that we got Halloween lights? I grew up with only Christmas. And... What about the light of Jesus? Is he light in our life? In John 3.19. John 3.19. And this is where I get my text for the cockroach, 3.19. <laughs> and I will preach this every once in a while at the farmer's market. This is one of three messages I have in my heart that somebody would come up to me and say, you're going to preach tonight. And a guy a, a, a month ago, something like that, well, I wasn't prepared to preach. you got to have a message because you don't know where God's going to call you to preach. This is one of these messages I have in my heart. I don't need paper. I can wing it with God's help. And this, i got three of them together, but this is my cockroach message. And this is the condemnation. Now, you don't want to be condemned. That's what you mean, condemned. This is condemnation. That light is coming to the world, Jesus Christ. There is. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He walked, he talked for 33 and a half years. He ate, he slept, he cried, he hungered. I wonder if he, if he stubbed his toe. Little things. I don't know. All right, so. Oh, I'm a Christian. I I love the Lord. Everything's... Everything. 
everybody wants to hear about Jesus. Amen. All right. Let's see what the Bible has to say. And men love darkness rather than light. Why isn't everybody? We had a cop one time. Where's your crowd of people? Well, many go the broad way. A few go into the straight gate. The Bible never tells you numbers and numbers of people are going to be saved. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say anything about results. Just preach the gospel. And Jesus tells us, many will go in the broad way that leads us to destruction. Don't look for the many. There ain't many here. But, if, you know, if I were to have carnival and have a hot dogs and, and beer, if I were to have entertainment, if I have a bounce house, I'll get all kinds of people and kids over here. We could have a vacation Bible class. We'll give you, we'll give you hot dog time. We'll give you singing worldly songs to Jesus 10 minute time. We'll give you 15 minute puppet, puppet show time. We'll give you five minute Bible time. Mm -hmm. We'll give you 10 minutes to run around the church house like act like an idiot. <laughs> and then we'll have a blue it's team. What's happening? And we'll have, a, a, we'll have a blue team and we'll have a red team so we can teach Christians to, to compete, battle each other. To Wow, that's not light. There should be no competition. That's right. I ought not to be going against you because you're doing something that, you know, God, you know, Louise got five people saved last week. I gotta go get 10. I wish. No, I said, thank you, Louise, for going out and doing something. Or Louise, you know, I'm dealing with this person. This guy lives by your house. Can you help me with this person? So, I haven't finished the verse. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. That's why they're not going to respond to you. Light hurts. Lisa's deeds should be reproved, and you match that with John 8, 12 we read. That lost man does not want you to tell he's a sinner. That lost man does not want you to interfere with his alcohol. That lost man does not want to interfere with, your t with his tobacco. That lost man does not want to interfere with his prostitution. That lost man does not want to interfere with his gambling. That hurts. Though those things are wrong. Now, prostitution will give you possibly a sexually transmitted disease. Gambling will make your family right. broke. The alcohol will turn your liver into a pickle and ruin your family, ruin your children for life. But don't touch me with Jesus. Wow. That's interesting. And we must understand that it is saved or lost when we're dealing with people that light hurts. And yet, it says, men love darkness. And even as a Christian, my own flesh enjoys the pleasures of sin. And that's where I got to come in and put, humble myself down, put that flesh down and say, Lord, I've sinned. And that's humbling. You put your flesh down. Like the biggest thing, there are people, well, you know, I'm a Christian and I, I tell lies, okay? All right. That's it. That's. Well, I'm talking about people who lie all the time. And I tell them, I'll tell you, you know, I say, you know how you can put your flesh down? How do I do that? The moment you tell that lie, you know you told a lie. You tell that person right to your face, excuse me, sir, I just lied to you. I just outright and just lied to you. And I'm, I, I ask for you to forgive me. I ask the God that saved me to forgive me. That will put your flesh down. Your flesh will not appreciate that. You do it once, and then the next time you do it again, and you do it three or four times, right as you told that lie, you confess and repent of that lie that moment. Your flesh is not going to like that. It'll build character. It'll build character. So what we got here in verse 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light. Again, Lisa's deeds should be reproved, that's verse 19, and that was in 513. That light will show you how we stand in God, save the lost. And we don't stand very well. We are still, there's never a time that we are perfect before God. We're saved. When we die, or the rapture were to happen right now, we're going to heaven. But the Bible says for the Christian, there is the judgment seat of Christ coming. There is gold. 
silver, precious stones, amen, glory to God. If you got that, you're going to get crowns and inheritance. But there's also wood, hay, and stubble. And if that were to be put to the torch, it would burn up, it would be ashes, and that's our sins. That's me in the flesh, not God. We're all going to have ashes. We're all going to set off those heavenly smoke detectors when we are judged. But we can relieve our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. We can approach to God and we can humbly come to God and say, I've got a problem with this sin. Yet 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. It's a battle. You know, I've heard preachers, well, I'm going to go... I'm going to go uh, attack Smutty Face with a water gun in hell and Satan. No, we got a bigger problem. We not only have a war with Satan and his angels, but right, but we've got a war in our bodies of our flesh. Inside of us, if we're saved, we've got the Holy Spirit. We also got the flesh. The Holy Spirit says, do this, and the flesh says, no. You got a problem. The Holy Spirit says, don't do that. And the flesh says, let's do it. And when we give in to the flesh, it is sin. We are churning off that way. And to regain, to charge up those batteries is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Light. Light. And that's all Jesus Christ, that light. Jesus is the Word. He is God. He's the Creator. He is light. John chapter 1, verse 1. What a remarkable four verses. Look how much. Oh wow. John verses chapter one verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shines in darkness, and we've been studying. And darkness comprehended it not. That's one whole paragraph, the first paragraph of the Gospel of John. And look how much was in it. And then we've got how many chapters to study? It's going to be a great study, I'm telling you. We're going to get all kinds of doctrines of the Christian. Right now, like I said, I'm up ahead. We're, we're, we're getting, it's great and wonderful things we're going to study, just by the Gospel of John. And I plan, you know, we've got further plans, you know, after this, First Thessalonians. Which is a great book for Christians. But right now, the light, the light, light shineth in darkness. Again, you come to a lost man, and darkness comprehended it not. Do you realize Jesus Christ is God? He's the Word. We, he's the Creator. And when He showed up, He came onto His own. His own had no idea who He was. Some of, he was a man that could heal. He's a man that could teach. And yet when it came time before Pilate, his nation said, crucify him, crucify him. Wait a minute. Where were the lepers that were unlepersized? Where was the blind that were made to be seen? Where was those that were deaf that was able to hear, crying out, crucify him? They didn't know who he was. The ones, the scribes that searched the scriptures didn't know who he was. The priests, the, the, the scribes, were not teaching the nation of Israel correctly of the law of Moses because they didn't know who he was. And when you preach the gospel and you got any kind of public ministry, whether you preach, you knock on doors, whether you just hand out gospel tracts, whatever you do for the Lord, you are going to come to people and they're going to have no idea who Jesus is. Absolutely no idea at all. Or they're going to have another, Paul speaks about another Jesus. There's a religion that has Jesus that you can eat him. There's a Jesus that came to North America. The Jewish people that were in North America that have no names ever to be found in the Bible. There's a Jesus who's not God. There's a Jesus Christ superstar. It was a Broadway hit when I was growing up. There's a Jesus Christ when you smack your knuckles on the on the engine case. There's the black woman. Oh, Jesus, my sweet Jesus. You 
So you hear that a lot up north. But let's look at Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Hey, this book is kind of, this Bible I find excellent. I go to the back of the Bible, I get so much concordance, subject in it. I got a concordance in my Bible. I wish I could find one like this for somebody. Neat. That would refute me. So, Revelation 17, 19. Revelation 19. And let's see. 19. Verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful, capital F, and True, capital T. That's Jesus Christ. There he is. And righteousness he does judge and make war. I can imagine someone telling Jesus, judge not, he should be judged. Uh, I can imagine Jesus, sorry, I said that. His eyes were as a flame of fire. He's angry. He's not that baby in the manger. This is the second advent of Jesus Christ. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. They don't even know what the name of Jesus is when he comes. Why? Because it's been seven years of Satan. Uh, Amos says that there's a famine of the word. And with what children are being taught today, and I'm not getting into the public school system, though Christ is not honored in the public school system. Yeah, oh yeah. And Tracy and Rachel and I, my family, have been in many churches. And we know this for a fact at the Sunday school. They're not teaching Bible. They're not open, very rarely they open the Bible and teach it. They're teaching about pirates. They're teaching about vegetables that talk. They're teaching lovely, great stories about Jesus. But they're not opening the Bible. And they're teaching other things. That the fact is that with, with the Sunday school classes that are coming up with the children today and the worldly churches today, they may not even come up to know the names of the Bible of men. Give 10 years and I almost guarantee, almost guarantee if you go into a Baptist church and say the kids coming out of the classroom, tell me about Jonah. Mm -hmm. There are people in America today who do not know, have no idea what Jesus Christ is and whatever happened. You ask them to explain what Christmas is. Oh, that's when I get all kinds of presents under the tree. But what about God? I don't know. What, what about God? Mm. And my family's dead. The same people that mock us are having hoo-ha at the farmer's market over Christmas and Easter. They're all excited. They're shopping for Christmas and Easter, but they don't want to hear about Jesus. What those holidays are supposedly about. General George Washington, President of the United States, declared one day of the year, one day, for Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving to God, the Almighty Creator. You can find it. And well, at least, well, at least this country, through, through the first president, said, We're going to give God one day, we're going to thank Him through the pilgrims. All right? Now that we have taken Thanksgiving, we have turned it into. Uh, have have, yeah. have the. the the uh, store prepare meals for you. Have box stuffing, but I remember everything was made from scratch for my family. And then take a nap, put it in the dishwasher, and wake up at 10 o'clock at night or, or camp out in a tent in front of your favorite store and do a Black Friday shopping. No thanks to God, and no thanks to God and prayer to God when you get the bill in January via credit card. And the thing is, it used to be just Friday. Now it's moved into... Yeah. Thursday afternoon. Okay. And there are people you ate your working. dinner, come on and shop. People are working on Thanksgiving, which is supposed to be dedicated to yeah, God. Everybody That's should right. have it off. Amen. To be with their family. They got, they got and I'm not going to mention right. no names, but these big stores have their employees working. But what about the CEO to come? Are they working? My thing would be, if, if I were made, be made president for a little while, I'd be like, okay, if you want your people to work on a holiday, you're going to be there too. You're going to get in your corporate jet and you're That's going to right. travel around to all your stores and greet your employees working on these holidays. Memorial Day. This is Memorial Day weekend. What does it have to do to sell in a car and go into the beach half naked? It's supposed to be about our veterans. Wow. 
Here's a time that they don't even know the name of Jesus and they're not even learning Jesus in the churches. Remember, I'm not talking about the schools. We have been part, God has allowed us as a family together. We have been part of one vacation Bible, uh, vacation Bible school. We'll never, ever, 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 ever do that again. Never. Never. There's more times lining up to go on the swing set than there is a study about the Bible. And then when we did do that that time, there was no Bible open. There was the story of a little kid. And that's a cute little story, but there was no Bible open. And we made a big wooden Bible to give the kids little Bibles, NIVs, K, uh, New King James Bible. We did not. And when I questioned them about the King James, well, that's all that we, we could get. If that's all you can get, that's what you got, burn it and don't give them nothing. Jesus said, if a kid comes to you and asks for fish, you're going to give him a serpent? You can't give him a fish dinner? Don't give him no dinner. And we're sorry to the case is that uh, I still think there's time, much more time before the rapture. Now, I, I believe the rapture's coming. But as the days of Noah, there was only eight people that got in the ark. And that was only his family. No one outside. Now, again, that Jesus is talking about the tribulation, so. But that leaven that went into that lump, boy, has it turned into a lump of leaven. And God calls leaven. He has never had anything ever, ever, ever to be good in leaven in the Bible. It's a doctrine of the Pharisee. It is wrong. All the feasts, when they were to bring the, the, the sacrifices, to bring the offering, no leaven. Unleavened. Unleavened bread. Except for one offering. That was, the, that was the Pentecost offering. God says, leaven. Why would that offering be the leaven? Because that pictures the church at Acts chapter 2. And you start letting, invite lost people to come in. Oh, bring your lost people Sunday morning, but we will not have a Sunday night service. I've been in churches like that. And that church looks like today, looks like it's a bar room with motorcycles. So the subject is Jesus, God. Genesis 1, verse 1. Now, I'm one of them people, I believe in the gap theory. I believe that God created the earth. Satan fell. He went down to the earth. Isaiah, I think it's 14. 7 or 14. I may be wrong on that. And the judgment upon Satan and all his angels was God left the place. He vacated it. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. Well, they say the earth is a million years old. It could be. We don't know when that happened. We don't know. Only man is 6,000 years old. And the earth was without form and void. Now, God does not make anything without form and void. God never does anything without reason. Never. Well, what about poison ivy? Well, man's sin. Poison ivy and itch is the consequences of sin. Death. God, God didn't make death. Death. Man made death when he sinned. But in retaliation to death, God gave us Jesus Christ, the, the great. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness is the absence of God. God is not there. There was judgment upon the earth because of Satan and his angels. Maybe that's when the dinosaurs were. I don't know. All right. And upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the faces of the water. So there was an earth. There was judgment. The earth was in a nice age. It was, according to the Bible. Darkness, ice. All right, so here's this darkened, miserable, rotten planet. This in the universe. Without God. There's no sun. There's no moon. It's just, the Bible says it was just the earth. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? They don't teach that in evolution. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Imagine what that would have done to Satan and his angels. Wow! Whoa! What is that? Turn that thing off! That's the almighty God showing up on this earth. God has come. 
Let there be light is never going to ever happen in hell. Ever. Okay, they go to hell. It's darkness. Gnashing and weeping of teeth. They will get light. God said, let there be light. Heaven, uh, death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. And those that were in hell will stand before God. They're going to stand before light. At the great white throne judgment. There is the light that you rejected. There is the light that someone preached to you. There is the light that someone gave you a gospel tract. There is the light that someone opened a Bible for you. There is the light that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You're going to stand before that light. And if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're going to be condemned. And God will cast you in the lake of fire. You'll never, ever, ever, ever see light again. Because you rejected that light. Now, in a sense, purgatory is real, it's hell, because you will come out of hell. And you'll be judged, you'll be cast off in the lake of fire if you're not in that land's book of life. But I doubt you're going to be in the land's book, if you're in the land's book of life, I guarantee you're not in hell, you're just wherever. And I can't get into that today. But when we go, and it says, and God saw the light, it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God does not want the light and darkness to mingle together. God does not want the Christian, oh, here I am Sunday morning, look how great and wonderful I am. And then the rest of the week he's living in darkness. God does not want that. God does not approve of that. God says there is light and there's darkness. You cannot walk in the middle. You cannot please God and you cannot please the flesh together. There's no way. God made a different light and God made darkness see. Look. And when eternity, eternity, for those that have rejected what God has said, there is complete, utter darkness. You will never have light again. Revelation 21. This light is wonderful. Let's go 21 more. It's all great. This is our future, if you're saved. I only say that because this is going to go out on YouTube and all that. So those are saved. Amen. And I saw a new heaven. Whoa, isn't that great? Can you imagine what a heaven looks like where it's not as space junk? There's no rovers. There's no spaceships, no satellites. And a new earth. Ooh, a new earth with no more curse. No more sin. No more death. There's no graveyards on this earth anymore. No hospitals. No police stations. No flies. No fleas. For the first heaven and the first Mother Earth were passed away. <laughs> Mother Earth is going bye-bye. When God comes, Mother Earth says, I'm out of here. Amen. Go hug a tree. The trees are going to disappear. In fact, one third of them are going to burn up in the tribulation period. We're passed away. <laughs> dead. <laughs> They're dead. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. A new Jerusalem. New heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is for the Christians, and new earth is for the Jew, and the new heavens are for the Gentiles. Like Naaman. There's even kind of separation in heaven. Kind of want to say it. Coming down from God out of heaven prepares a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God, him, God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. No more tears. And there shall be no more death 
Nor sorrow. That was part of the curse. Sorrow was part of the curse, Genesis 3. Nor crying. What's the difference between tears and crying? Your eyes may tear because it's got dust or filth or allergies. There's no more allergies. You don't need Visine anymore. Your eyes don't need to lubricate itself no more. You got new eyeballs. Neither shall there be any more pain. Anybody say amen to that? Amen. For the former things are passed away. Picnic tables and swimming pools are gone. Automobiles are gone. Sin is gone. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Now that's where you cannot comprehend what heaven's going to be. How can you describe something that God says, I'm going to make it new, and he doesn't tell you what he makes? Boy, the benefits we're going to get in heaven. <laughs> and he said, Right, for these words are true and faithful. That describes Jesus, wasn't it, on the horse? I just realized that. See, God even tells me no thing. And an ant can certify it. I've got ants walking in my Bible. That's the coming of Jesus Christ, the second advent. So John, right. John, you wrote the gospel, John. The words, that's Jesus. Look at that. They said unto him, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega. That's the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. So there's some Greek God wants us to know. In the beginning and the end. So he tells us what the, what the Greek means. I will give unto them a, that a thirst, a fountain of water, of life freely. That's not us Christians. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I am his son by Jesus Christ. I'm also his father-in-law by the bride of Jesus Christ. I'm also his son by Jesus Christ. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You say, well, I lie as a Christian. I can't okay, but you're not lost in your sin. You have never asked Christ to say, these sins are still accounted to you because you've never believed on Jesus. And those are the works that are judged at the, at the great white throne judgment. If you still have these in your book, in your record, you go in the lake of fire. I don't have those. I am washed in the blood of Jesus. But what about what sins you do that are not under the blood? It's burnt as wood, hay, and stubble. My name is written in the land of of life. I have heavenly reservations in New Jerusalem by the blood of Jesus Christ. I can never lose that. Lost people, on the other hand. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plague, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, that's me, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city. Isn't that what Satan showed Jesus? If you worship me, I'll give you oh, look, look what Jesus gets by refusing Satan. Look what the world gets by getting Satan. Say, yes, Satan, I'll take it. You get hell, you get the lake of fire, you burn forever. It showed me a great city, holy Jerusalem. I hate that today. They call it the Holy Land. It is not. It's filled with Catholics that will sell you out and tell you false Bible story that this is where Jesus died. Sorry, the Bible says this he died. This is a little piece of the cross. He died outside the gates of Jerusalem. Get out of here, liar. Get out of here. And Baptists fall for it all the time. Don't you want to go to the Holy Land? I will. New Jerusalem. Holy Jerusalem. That's the Holy Land. Descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto the stone most great, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Uh, the verse I want, where is it? it says that he is the light. Okay, verse number 22. 22. 21, 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of sun, 
neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. Ready? And the Lamb, capital L, is the light thereof. A man that rejects the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world gets darkness forever. A man that receives the Lamb of God, he gets a light that is more better. Now, no need of sun or moon. Let's go back to Genesis 1 again. Scripture is Scripture. Look how great it is. Now watch this, Genesis 1. That light, this is what we're talking about, the light. What is that, that, that toy, light bright, it's so bright. You want to talk about a 100 watt bulb. What about a Jesus Christ watt bulb? And he won't even charge you for it. There is no electric company, there is no electrical meter, there is no surges. I bet you'd be a surge when that lost man stands before the light, the great white throne. Amen. Imagine, imagine that great white throne to a man who's been in hell for 40, 50, 4,000 years in darkness. In that moment he stands before God, that throne is light and bright and it kills his eyes as Jesus has killed his testimony. Because he will not believe in that light and he's forever cast off into uh -huh. that hell, the lake of fire forever, the second death. You want to be born twice, you don't want to be died twice. In Genesis chapter 1 again, verse 3, God said, let there be light. Now think about New Jerusalem, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. All right, there it is. So let's go to verse 1 and verse 4, I mean chapter 1, verse 14. Let's get scripture with scripture. Genesis 1, 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from night. And let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. That's the sun. The lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Wait a minute. Verse 3, let there be lights. Verse 16, there's the sun and moon. That light that shows up in verse 3, that light that's in New Jerusalem is not the sun. It's not the moon. It is God, Jesus Christ, who is the Word, who is our Savior, who is also God. So when you declare that Jesus is not God, look at all the things you are wiping out with Jesus. And when you sing that hymn, which is... No, wait, all right, just four, five, four fifty-five, please. They don't explain when he sent out that gospel light. What greater light if they were to believe on that light when it becomes all about Jesus? Now I tell people again, I, this something you can take or not take. There is no darkness in New Jerusalem. There is no darkness in eternity forward. Absolutely not. Only those in Lake of Fire that has nothing to do with the Christians. Do you realize in New Jerusalem that light of God? If you could get yourself a box, which there's no boxes, get yourself, put yourself in that box and tape up that box with all the duct tape you can get. Seal it up. It will still be light. There is a tree of life in New Jerusalem. There's no shadow of the tree of life. There's no shadows of the mansion I'm going to get. It's all light. And that's how it was here in the beginning. There's darkness, but there's light. And I guarantee when Adam and Eve, I guarantee that garden, as bright as bright as could ever be, bright as wonderful as bright it could be. And one day when they took that fruit and ate it, it got dark, it got green, and the clouds started setting. In. That moment God didn't look so good. We had to hide from God. How did they know God was coming? You can't see God. God's a spirit because there was a light coming. Here it is. And that light blinded them. How did it blind them? Because they're in sin. Darkness has come to the garden. There's no more light without Jesus Christ. So, God the Father, God the Son, God the Father, 1-1. One, one. God the Son, 1-2, the Spirit. God the Son, verse 3, light. Now, 
God did not inspire the chapters and verse numbers. In other words, when he told Moses, okay, Moses, chapter 1 now, ready? Verse 1, Moses, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. Write down number 2, Moses. He didn't do that. But isn't it great how wonderful a man prayed to God for, for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Verse 1, God. Verse 2, Holy Spirit. Verse 3, Jesus Christ. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Taken up in the first three chapters of your Bible, which we've already talking about. Science can disprove one, two, and three. They're dead without life. Religion can disprove one, two, and three. They're dead without life. Jehovah Witnesses say we have three gods. No, I have one God. One, two, and three. One and one and one equals one. That's right. That's God's math. One times one times one. Yep. Amen. So there they are. So back to John 1. Yay! Yay. <laughs> we do that all the time. When we come to chapter 1, we have the Bible read to us as a family. So they'll say, yeah. John 1, and we like, yay, he won! Yeah, there's an app online. Oh, really? The Bible, and you can have it read to you. Or your phone, or anything like that. It's good. I think I've seen it, that app. It's when you get a King James app and have it read to you, it, it makes it more as you follow along. Especially if it's one that has some like music and drama. Like, you can feel like a build-up in sometimes the verses. It's yeah, pretty, it's pretty cool. If you get the drama change, side, change the voice, that's wrong. They change the voices. And what it does, it'll tell you, all right, this man's talking, now a different voice. Okay, someone else is. Well, I haven't got any voices. Yeah, we have one that the voices change. Like, when a woman's talking, it's a woman. Oh, okay. Only thing we don't like is when they're on their deathbed. Yeah, when they're on the deathbed. <laughs> that's the way they talk when they're on the deathbed. Really? Yeah. Verse 5, and the I light shineth in darkness. That's, right. That's Genesis 1. Amen. That's also the first advent. Cool. You know, that's the, that's the second advent too. You know, at the, at the end of the seven years, which I don't, God's been showing me much that I don't have written down because I didn't think we were going to go this far, as far as subject. It says yeah. the sun, moon, and stars gave off their, no, their light no longer. The, the, moon, the sun was darkened. The moon was turned as blood. The stars were held from the... So Genesis 1, there's no light, Jesus shows up. The first advent of Jesus Christ, the nation of Israel was in darkness. They're sick, they're, they're, they're medicated, and they're just no light. Jesus came and became that light. The end of the tribulation, there's no light at all from the sun, the moon. And Jesus comes as light in that horse. And then when we, the heavens and earth are all passed away and that's all done and gone, we will be in the city of all light, Jesus Christ, forever Amen. and ever. And we'll get back in verse 4 again. We're going to look at the life next time. We looked at the light this time. Now we get into the life. That's a whole other stuff. The life. That's only one paragraph so far in the, book, in the Gospel of John. There is a whole bunch more to come. See, we're going to get where I'm right now. Right now, we'll get into what the church is and what the church is not. Where I am right now, in my notes. See, we're going to take. We're, it's not just. It's, it's all what God has to offer us. That's right. Amen. And Lord God, I just thank you for the light. Lord, we all one time on a date we may not even know, stood in darkness and had no idea what you were and what you was and anything about you. We thought we had ideas, we had thoughts, we may, may have had nothing at all. I don't know. We're all different here. But Lord, there's a day that the light came. I guarantee that first time we, we stood away, we got away from it, we ran into the covers. That's right. And Lord, you allowed the light to come back. Lord, you allow someone to plant seeds in our heart. You have the light that we need to grow seeds. Isn't it amazing Look, we put a seed in the ground in darkness, and yet the light has that seed to grow? That's only you, God. That pictures us. And Lord, you had someone come into our lives and put a little water. And Lord, we sit here 
with an open Bible with light. Your word, the King James Bible. Lord, I pray more will come. Lord, I'm not looking for 5,000 people. Lord, I'm looking for a faithful few that will love you and want to do. Lord, we can get out of the wind and serve you. Lord, enough people that I can call, visit. Lord, not too many where I can't not do those things. And Lord, if it grows that much, someone that will come along, we can teach and have them grow a church. Whether it's South Daytona or Ormond Beach or Holly Hill, Lord, that won't disturb me because we need churches that do right. Amen. I'm not interested in numbers. And Lord God, bless this time. Bless us, Lord God. See that we love you, Lord. And see that we're sinners still. Lord, for Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, now they start going. Oh. They just opened my eyes and it sounds like, oh.